Hello, People's Church. This is Pastor Chris. I am the lead pastor of our Indianapolis campus and just want to take a moment to welcome all of our campuses, our Oklahoma City campus, Northwest campus, Midwest City campus, Indy campus, and our Mabel Bassett campus. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I also just want to take a minute just to show my thanks and appreciation for our senior pastor, Pastor Herbert Cooper. I'm so thankful for Pastor Herbert and Tiffany, their leadership, their love, even through these really unique times, Pastor Herbert and the executive team have been so amazing and we love them so much. And so come on, let's, let's give it up for them. You can put some claps uh, in your comments there. And so we love you, Pastor. And I'm so honored to be able to wrap up this series called Good News, There Is More To The Story. And so I know the series has blessed me and I'm honored to wrap it up today. And so today, I want to talk to you about good news from the storm. Good news from the storm. The worst storms I have ever experienced in my life was when we lived in Oklahoma City. I'm talking about, I didn't know what a thunderstorm was until we lived in Oklahoma City. I learned real quick why the Oklahoma City basketball team got the nickname, The Thunder. They have the loudest thunder that I've ever heard. In Oklahoma City, that is the very first time that I ever saw rain coming down down sideways. They have the worst hail storm. Matter of fact, they even had a snowstorm. It doesn't snow there a lot, but I remember living there and they had a snowstorm that shut down the city. Cars were left stranded on the road. It was unbelievable. And the scariest storm that I ever experienced when we lived in Oklahoma City, I was youth pastor there. We lived there for six and a half years, loved our time in Oklahoma City. Uh, but I experienced a storm that scared me to death. It was a night where Jamie had worship practice and I was home alone with our two kids, Jace and Callie. Jace was about four years old at that time. Callie was still a baby and we heard about this storm that was coming in and it being a hailstorm. And hey, y'all know in Indianapolis when hail comes, it's like little pebbles. But when it came in Oklahoma City, I'm talking this was golf ball size hail. Some hail as big as the size of an orange. And we're just sitting in the house relaxing and when the hail came and started hitting on the house it literally sounded like bombs were going off all around our house boom 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 I mean just like like it was World War three outside of our home and so immediately as we were hitting the hail boom 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 I mean I got it freaked me out I grabbed Jace I said Jace come on and Callie and I had Callie and I'm going Jason I, I put them into my my closet I said stay right here and I ran ran into Callie's room and I, I grabbed her mattress off of her crib. I didn't know what else to grab because I don't know, I don't know if a tornado was coming. I don't know if the, the house was about to cave in and this whole time, boom, boom, just slamming against the house. And so I run back into the closet and I, I get down with Jason Callie and I put the, the mattress over us. And so there we are where we're, we're sitting in my closet. The, the hail is still belting the house. Boom, boom. And all of a sudden, Jace is, hey, Jace is Daddy, I'm scared. And I'm like, it's OK. And he's like, Daddy, Daddy. I'm like, it's, it's going to be OK. No, no, Daddy. I'm like, what, Jace? He's like, I got to poop. And I'm like, Jace, no, you can't. But you got you got to. We got to stay right here. You got to hold it. Oh, he's like, Daddy, I'm going to poop my pants. I'm, I'm like, Jace, you cannot poop. You need to hold it, okay? You just, just hold it for a little bit longer. And his stomach was all turning. He starts passing gas. It really became a storm in that closet. We're, we're holding our breath. And, and, and Callie, she didn't even know what's going on. She's like, yeah. And I'm holding Callie. And, and Jason's holding it. And finally, the storm passed us over. And we took off the mattress. And Jace praised the Lord. He did not go to the bathroom in the closet. He was able to make it to the restroom. And, and we survived. But man, that storm is one one I will never forget. And the reality is, is that we all go through storms in life. That they may look different for many of us, but every single one of us, we deal with storms. Matter of fact, right now, all around our world, we are dealing with the storm of COVID-19. This is a storm. It's a pandemic. It is hitting our entire world. 
And this storm has affected us in so many ways. Some are now dealing with the storm of losing a job, the storm of financial loss, the storm of getting sick, getting the virus. Some are dealing with the storm of losing a loved one. Some are dealing with the storm of their, their business suffering and they're wondering if they can keep it open. Many are battling mental health storms, the storm of depression, the storm of anxiety, the storm of worry. Many are dealing with the storm of fear. And just because God is with us doesn't mean we won't face storms. We all face storms. Matter of fact, if you read throughout the Bible, there are scriptures to help prepare us for the storms that we're going to face in life. Jesus himself said, fear not when you face trouble. That could easily be translated to fear not when you face storms. The Bible teaches us that we need to wear the armor of God. Why? Because in life we're going to face some battles. We're going to get battered by some storms. The Bible teaches us to stand firm. Why? Because there are things in life that will come against us. There, were, there will be storms that we deal with. We are in a storm right now, and the reality is this is not the last storm that we're going to face. That throughout our life, you and I, we are going to face more storms. And I know what some of you are thinking. Pastor, I thought this message was about good news. <laughs> Can you be a little bit more positive? Okay, I am positive you and I are going to face more storms in life. We all face storms. And so this series has been about good news. And obviously with good news, there's, there's always bad news, right? When people come to you, you want the, the good news first or the bad news? And uh, the bad news is, is that we will all face storms. The good news is that there is more to the story of every storm. And so let me give you some good news about storms. Number one is this, you don't have to be afraid of the storm. You don't have to be afraid of the storm. We're going to look at a story today in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples were on a boat and a big, massive, nasty storm came. I mean, waves are crashing against the boat. The boat is rocking. It feels like the boat is about to break apart. And I want you to look at what happens in Mark chapter 4, verse 38. While this storm is crashing against the boat, it says Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? See, when we're facing a storm, it's easy to be gripped with fear. It's easy to start acting like the disciples and we start to question God. God, do you even care? What are you doing? Oh, Lord, Jesus is going to let me drown. Jesus, as you, have you forgotten about us? Do you want us to die? It's so easy to be gripped with fear. Truth be told, I am a bit of a hypochondriac. And to be honest with you, when COVID first hit, the United States, it was kind of on the coast, and I was kind of like, oh, I don't, I don't think there's too much to it, and then all of a sudden this thing started to spread everywhere. People getting infected, people dying, cities, our nation completely shut down, and I'll be honest with you, fear, boy, it crept in really quick, and it grabbed a hold of my heart. I was worried. If, if, if my throat was a little scratchy, I'm like, do I, do I have COVID? I, ha, I remember I had a headache one day. I'm like, oh, Lord, do I, do I have the virus? I mean, I'm, I'm worried now. Do, do I, have, I don't want to infect my family or my kids or I don't want to infect my, my, my parents. You know what I mean? I, I, well, we got to get groceries and, and Lord knows we needed some toilet paper. So we're, we're out to, to get that stuff. And when I'm walking past people in the grocery store, I'm holding my breath. Anybody else do that? Every time I walk past somebody, <gasps> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shopping through the store, holding my breath. I, I, I got my mask on. I'm in fear. It filled my heart. And it's so easy to get gripped and ripped by fear. But I want to encourage you today. You don't have to be afraid of the storm. If Jesus isn't afraid, we 
don't have to be afraid. I love in this story how when the storm is hitting, Jesus is just relaxing on a cushion. Listen, when COVID hit, Jesus didn't start freaking out in heaven and looking around and being like, oh my gosh, what is happening? And he's putting on all the news channels and he's checking all the updates and he's checking in with the scientists and, and what, he, he didn't start freaking out and worry about what going, no, 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 Jesus isn't afraid. And we don't have to be afraid. And I, and I know what some of you are thinking, well, pastor, I'm not Jesus. And you're right. And neither am I. I had freak out moments. I've had days where I've woke up depressed. I've had nights I couldn't sleep, nights I've woken up in a cold sweat. There's been times where anxiety has gripped my heart. Matter of fact, I hit a point where I just had to have a heart to heart with myself. I had to remind myself, Jesus is not caught off guard by this. And if Jesus isn't afraid, I don't have to be afraid of the storm. And even in this story, Jesus wasn't afraid. He was not caught off guard by the storm at the sea either. Look at what happens in Mark chapter four, verse 39. It says, he got up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And then the wind died down and it was completely calm. They experienced a nasty storm. They thought they were going to die. Waves were crashing. The boat was rocking, but Jesus got them through it. Listen, we don't have to be afraid because Jesus will get us through the storm. And I want to share with you three ways that Jesus gets us through the storm with the waves crashing, with it being dark and the boat rocking and with us being tossed around here or there and worried for our lives. Listen, I want you to know that he will get us through and I pray these ways. I pray they will bring peace to your heart. Number one is this. The first way is he'll get us through with his presence. Mark chapter four, verse 36. It says, after they had dismissed the crowd, notice as they were getting onto the boat, it says they took Jesus with them. Jesus, you're coming with us. They didn't know a storm was happening, but they wanted Jesus close to them. They wanted to be close to Jesus. Listen, the proximity of Jesus to your life makes a difference. The proximity of Jesus makes a difference. He was in the boat. They took Jesus with them. He was there. They were close to Jesus. Let me ask you this. During this storm, who are you taking along? Who are you bringing close to you? Can I tell you today, there is no one greater than Jesus. You need to bring him closer than anyone or anything, and he will help you get through the storm. They made it through the storm with Jesus. Jesus was with them before the storm, in the midst of the storm, and after the storm. If you are afraid, press into his presence. If you're afraid, press into his presence. Your proximity to Jesus, it makes a difference. The second way that he'll get us through the storm so that you don't have to be afraid is he'll get us through with his word. Jesus spoke, quiet, be still, and it became completely calm. I wonder if these words were meant for more than just a storm. I know these words calm the physical storm. But I wonder if Jesus used these words to also calm the internal storm and the fear that his disciples were facing. I wonder if his words were not also for them to calm their fears. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Jesus, in a passage of Scripture, talks about storms and his word. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down 
The streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. A storm came, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But it goes on to say, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So when the storms, the rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. How do we get through the storm? We need God's word every day. We need to know it and we need to live it. We need to apply it. Our lives must be built on his word for so many reasons, but one of those is so that when a storm comes, we can stand strong against it. We can make it through the storm. We need to hear from God every day. We need his word every day. And the way that you can hear from God every day is by reading your Bible. Get in his word every day and it'll help you through the storm. It'll help you stand up to the storm. I, matter of fact, I believe Jesus is saying to some of you today those same three words. Quiet, be still. Quiet, be still. If you are afraid, get wrapped up in his word. Get wrapped up in his word, and it'll get you through the storm. Let, let him give you some more good news. A, th a third way we get through this, he gets us through the storm is he gets us through with his power. Jesus speaks to storms and he calms them. His power can get you through the storm. His power can heal. His power can deliver. His power can provide. His power can restore. His power can protect. He is an all powerful God. Mark chapter 4 verse 40 through 41. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Don't you love it when Jesus asks questions that have pretty obvious answers? <laughs> Why are we so afraid? We're about to drown. This storm is, is taking us over. And he would ask that same question to us right now. Why are you so afraid? And you're like, the economy it's crashing. The, our family, our health, our career, marriage, there's death. I mean, this is why I, I, I'm afraid. And then he says, do you still have no faith? And what he's really asking is, don't you know who I am? Have you forgotten who I am? And the Bible says they were terrified and they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey me. I love it. They asked, who is this? I want to remind you today who he is and about his power. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord who heals. Don't you dare forget God has the power to heal you. He's Jehovah Shammah. It means the Lord is there. God has not abandoned you. He is with you every step of the way, every minute and every second of the storm. He's Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. He's your provider. He's Jehovah Shalom. It means he's the Lord of peace the prince of peace. He rebuked the wind and it went still. He, he's Je Jehovah Sabaoth. It means he's the Lord of armies. He's fighting your battles. He's with you. He's not a God that's behind you. He's standing out there in front of you. He is El Olam, the everlasting God. He's everlasting. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the Messiah and the Savior. He is an all-powerful God and his power, it will get you through the storm. You don't have to be afraid because Jesus will get you through. He'll get you through with his presence. He'll get you through with his word and he'll get you through with his power. If you are afraid, pray for his power. God can get you through with his power. Who he is and what he does is powerful. Number two, let me give you some more good news about a storm. And that's this, Jesus is developing your faith through storms. In Mark chapter four, verse 40 through 11, he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? 
See, Jesus isn't just showing his power, but he is trying to teach them something. See, Jesus could have just woken up, went out, calmed the storm, quiet, be still, and then he could have went back to just taking a nap and got to the other side. But that's not what he did. He asked them some questions because he wanted to use this storm to challenge their faith, to build their faith. And he wants to build your faith through this storm as well. One of the best things you can do that you can receive, that one of, the, one of the best things you can do from a storm is learn from it. It's one of the best things we all can do right now in this storm is learn from it. Listen, the storm isn't the big bad wolf. It is the refining fire. It was a, it was a developing place. Look what James chapter one, verse two through four says. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials, or we could say storms of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And then it says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking everything. Listen, we all go through storms. Don't fear it, use it. Let him develop you through it. Listen, you can come out of this storm stronger and better. Instead of your faith dying in this storm, you can come out of it with your faith thriving. And I wanna give you two questions to ask yourself. These are questions I've asked myself during this storm. Number one, what is God trying to teach you in this storm? And then number two, how is God trying to develop you in this storm? I can speak for myself that one of the things God is trying to teach me and develop me is that I need some better fruit, that I need some more patience in my life. I need some more love. God's teaching me I let too many things steal my joy. He's shown me there's some ugly inside of me that I still need him to work on and develop. Uh, Jamie and I, we've been doing Friday night Facebook lives and we'll go on there and Jamie will do a worship song and I've been sharing a, 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 a devotion and so we've been doing that every Friday night in our home and um, the, the kids are there, right? Like it's, Again, it's not like church where the kids go away into kids ministry, the kids are in the house. And so every night we ask our oldest two, Jason Callie, to watch our youngest, Cohen. He is all over the place. And uh, we're, we're getting down to like the final countdown. We've got to go on Facebook Live at 8 p.m. And it's like 7.50 and we can't find Jason Callie. We have Cohen, but we can't find Jason. We're going outside. We're going to Jason Callie. We're, we're trying to find them. And again, the clock is ticking. We have to start service. Come to find out, they decided they wanted to play a little game of hide and seek. And so when they finally heard the tone from mommy and daddy's voice, they kind of snuck out of their hiding spot. And y'all, I'm just going to be, I'll let into them. We need you watching. The, what are you thinking? What, this is not the time. We asked just one thing. I mean, I'm going off. And then it's like 7.58. So go upstairs and watch your brother. And then I sit down in front of the camera. Hey, People's Church, 8 p.m. Oh, man, we miss you and we love you. And we did our whole little service and nobody had any clue. And I remember when I got done, I'm like, man, that's not right. <laughs> like, what is wrong with me? Like, Corona's got people going crazy. Corona has me going crazy. And you know what it's so easy to do? We can be in this storm and we can just blame the storm. It's not the storm's fault that I went off on my children. There's something deeper in me. And so I had to pray. I've been praying. I've been seeking God. I'm not going to blame the storm. God, there's stuff coming, outside, coming out of me that I need you to heal. I need you to develop. I need your help with. See, we can blame the storm or we can look deeper and we can ask God to develop us. Don't let the storm pass without learning what God wants to do in you. Maybe he wants you to love more. Maybe he wants you to share your faith more. Maybe he wants you to spend more time with your family. Learn from the storm. Maybe he wants you to pray more, press into his presence more. Maybe he wants you to read your Bible, to wrap yourself in his word more. Maybe some of you, you've been attending church for the very first time. It's online and you've clicked in 
and you're dialing in and God's showing you, listen, I've always had this for you and don't let this die when Corona dies. You continue to press in and come. Listen, God wants to develop us through this storm. We should come out of this storm thriving, growing. Let him develop you. And then let me give you the third piece of good news from the storm. Number three is this. Jesus will get you to the other side of the storm. Mark chapter four, verse 35. It says, that day when evening came, he said to the disciples, let us go over to the other side. Think about this. Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. And guess what? Jesus knew what they didn't know. He knew they were going to hit a storm. He knew they would be sailing through a storm. He knew he would be sleeping when they hit that storm. But he did not say to them, let's go into the storm. He said, let's go to the other side. See, the storm is never the destination. Let me say that again. The storm is never the destination. Come on, how many of y'all hate turbulence? I hate I think turbulence is from the devil. Every plane that I ever get on, I pray over every inch of that plane. I'm praying the whole time we're going up and as we're flying and we're coming down, I pray for no turbulence. But unfortunately, my prayers are not always answered. There are times I hit turbulence and I'm white knuckled and my stomach's turning and I'm scared and I'm crying out to Jesus on the plane. But listen, I don't fly to go through turbulence. I'm trying to get to the other side. I'm trying to get to my destination and I want you to know there is an other side of every storm and God will get us to the other side. God can take you to the other side of COVID-19. He'll take you to the other side of your pain. He'll take you to the other side of a divorce. God is a God of the other side. The storm is never the destination. There is an other side of COVID-19 and we will get through this. Jesus said, let us go. Come on, let's go with Jesus. I don't know who you're watching this with and sitting next to, but would you tell them right now, let's go. Come on, tell your neighbor, let's go. Type it in the chat, let's go. Jesus has somewhere he wants to take us and he will get us through to the other side. Let's go. Hear me, don't stay stuck in the storm. Trust Jesus and go to the other side of the storm. Look what Psalm 23, 4 says. It says, even though I walk, walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. I did a little search on that darkest valley and, and one scholar said it was a gloomy place. Another one said that David was encountering gloom and doom. And he says, I've got to walk through that darkest valley, walk through the gloomy place, walk through the gloom and doom. Don't stop, don't get stuck. Walk, keep walking. God will get you to the other side. Listen, people get stuck in storms stuck in dark valleys, stuck with no joy, stuck with depression, stuck in poverty, stuck in generational cycles. Don't get stuck. I need you to keep walking with God. He's not, the storm is not the destination. He said, no, I'm gonna take you to the other side. This is just a bump in the road. How many ever been pushing something and you stop right before a bump and then you try to push it over that? It's almost impossible. You would think you were pushing up against like a, 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 a 10 foot building, but if you got some momentum, how many you know it doesn't matter if there's a bump there, you're gonna boom, boom, and you're gonna get on the other side of it. Listen, there is no demon in hell, storm, wave, pain, or problem that will stop you along the way. You're gonna get to the other side of the storm. You're gonna come out strong if you keep walking. I wanna encourage you today, press on, keep moving, don't stop. Let's go with Jesus, let's go with his presence, let's go with the word, let's go in his power. He will get us on the other side of the storm with Jesus. We will get through this together. You don't need to be afraid of the storm. There's more to the story. There's something God wants to do in your life. He wants to develop you. He wants you to grow, make you better. And there's another side. He will get us through to the other side.